All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast of Remix and Narrative. And our topic for today is autism awareness. I am so excited about this conversation. This is our third conversation in regards to just connecting with families and just being able to share just the power of being able to tell your story and being able to help others to better understand just what it means when it comes to um, autism in our community and also ways that families and supporters and different organizations have been using um, their platforms to be able to educate others. Today, I'm extremely excited to introduce our guest for today. And so I'm gonna bring her on soon. Um, before we get started, I wanna just first let everyone know how the format goes. And so the first thing is that for every, um, Oh, autism awareness talk. This is an open dialogue. And so as people pose questions, we will be sure to answer those questions. Also, if you have um, um, any questions for myself or for Shalita, just make sure that this known. But again, we're going to get started with our conversation so that we can make sure we make the most of this time. And so I'm going to bring in Shalita now and we will start our conversation. Hey, how are you? Oh, girl, I'm just honored to be here. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy. I'm about to get my camera together so we can be straight. How has your day been? It, you know, it's been real covid -y. It's been real oh. covid <laughs> yeah. COVID-y. I'm, I'm sure. Tell me, like, what is the feel of it in your city? Like, what's going on? Well, you know, the good thing, I, my husband and I, we have lived in five or six different states. We uh, enjoy moving around and uh, okay. going to places and meeting new people. And so this is our second tour of duty in Minnesota. And oh, wow. the one thing that we enjoy about Minnesota is these folks in Minnesota, they follow the rules. Okay, <laughs> that's that's real good. good rule following white folks up here. Okay. No, they good. don't book the system. If you tell them to stay in the house, they stay in the house. And so Minnesota is leading the nation in uh, the low rate of new COVID cases. And, oh, and awesome. the state is flattening the curve. So um, everybody's been staying in the house. Everybody's been following the rules and, and abiding by, uh, you know, what the governor has decided that we're going to do right now, which is to pretty much shelter in place, uh, go out for essentials only. And so, you know, of, of all the states in the country, uh, we have one of the lowest number of new COVID cases. So we've been staying in the house, which is, you know, a challenge and a blessing oh, for us. Uh, you know, kids who have special needs, but you know, we're making the most of it. We're doing what we got to do. You know, it's either go outside and play or live. What you want to do? So true. So true. Um, we just had the announcement made that our schools are closed for the rest of the year. So, okay, see, you, my mama had the best idea ever. When all this stuff happened, my mama said, Why are they stressing everybody out for two months? Close school now. Exactly. Start summer early, and then we'll pick it back up in September. I mean, exactly. you know, when you think about what parents are, and teachers are going through, so teachers have all of a sudden got to put everything online uh, yep. and pick everything online and rearrange how they teach and how they present information to children. And then the parents who are tasked with working from home have got exactly. to be the teacher, the janitor, the recess monitor, the cafeteria lady, the paraprofessional, yep. the gym uh, teacher, and the educator. And All so it. it's been in difficult for everybody. Just shut it down. You know, let's start over because you can't figure this out. They gave us, what, 10 days? to come yep. up with online education, how to administer it, as well as how to receive it. And that just wasn't enough time to get it done properly. No, it wasn't. And, you know, and I'm, I'm with you. Like, at the end of the day, there's so many questions, more questions than answers. So this is safer to be able to be at home. And so I I pray here in Chicago, we continue to, to follow some rules like Minnesota has been doing. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still praying that these fucking Minnesota learn how to give up. That's the thing. They want to keep trying yeah. with the cool thing. You know, my son yeah. was in the middle of a project today and the website crashed. How do you encourage that? You know, he's yeah, in the yeah. middle of a project. There's no way to recover all of the work he's done. How do you how exactly. do you say that? Exactly. Well, Again, I'm so happy that we're going to have this conversation. And first, let me just share, um, and I'm going to have my son come in here in a second, but 
Um, just so you know a little bit more about the platform I do here in Chicago. So with Birds into Books, I'm really big about literacy and community engagement and just making sure we have safe spaces for families. And so um, knowing that August, I mean, April is Autism Awareness Month, I just thought like, especially with us also being at home, I would love to have a space where we have honest conversations about autism. Um, many of the students, I'm a teacher, um, have different levels of it, right, from the spectrum. Right. Mm -hmm. um, some of the families that come out to my events have children who are autistic. And so for whatever reason, I feel like um, more, I don't know how much it, we'll talk about it in Minnesota, but here in Chicago, I've seen more parent groups, more um, openness about, okay, what is autism? What does that really mean? Like, what does that mean about the future for my child? And so there is a lot of support behind it, but I also think there's still so many misconceptions about like, what does it mean um, as far as ability wise for my child or for a child, say your child is not autistic, but you know someone who has a child that's autistic. Like, what does that actually mean? And what's my role in that? And so we've had a beautiful uh, conversation the last couple of Fridays with parents and just the work that they're doing. And I sent home a, a newsletter every Monday and I was like, man, you know what? I'm gonna put a video this time in the newsletter. And so when I went to YouTube, I put in, Autism Awareness Month, you were the very first video that came up at the top. <laughs> and my son knows his mother and I'm, I have no, no shame. And like, you know what, if I want to have the best conversations, I'm going to reach out to individuals. He's like, mom, you should interview her. I said, you know what? I'm going to try to find look her. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. I know. Baby. So I, I'm That's a producer, girl. I, what did you say? That's a producer right there. That's yeah, a I'm telling you, he was like, you should introduce, you should interview her. So I looked up your info and I was so appreciative of you getting back to me because uh, we watched the interview on um, the newscast and just, it, it made me dig more into your story. And I was just so encouraged just about the way you've been able to use um, your platform in order to educate others. And so the very first thing, so as you're coming in, you all, um, any comments, any things you want to share, please let us know. I will make sure that they show up on the screen. Um, before we get started on the first thing, I just want to say our first comment is um, someone watching say, I love this, which I'm happy that they do. <laughs> and then there's a couple of families on there like, hey guys, so I'm hey. excited. Hey, so listen in, you got questions, put them in the chat box. I'll make sure that they come up. Um, but I want us to just jump right in. So the first part is, that I want to talk about is just your background story. So do you mind just kind of letting the audience know yeah. who you are, your family, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so uh, my name is Trilletta Brundage. I live in uh, Minnesota. Uh, my husband and I have four children, 13, 7, 6, and 5. And our youngest three children have autism spectrum disorders. Each one is different. My seven-year-old Brandon, he is an amazing artist but um, he has social anxiety. He has to have a routine. He will line up his food and not eat it. He will line up his toys and put them in certain sizes or shapes or colors and, you know, won't touch them for hours. Um, and so he's very afraid, very fearful, has a lot of anxiety. My daughter Cameron didn't talk outside the home until she was almost six years old. Um, oh, wow. She talked to us, but she would go to school and not talk. Um, and my four-year-old Daniel, uh, he, my five-year-old Daniel, I'm sorry, he just turned five. He can speak Russian. He can read on a fourth grade level, but he, oh, is, still wow. in, he is still in a pamper and he is still drinking a bottle and he's still eating pureed food. So each child mm. with autism is very different. And so what I like to say is if you've met one child with autism, you have only met one child with autism because no yep. two. Yeah. are the same. And so, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a hard, hard, hard journey. Um, you know, when I found out my third child was diagnosed with autism, I crawled under the table. I mm. grabbed a bottle of Tito's vodka and I stayed there for <laughs> three days. Yeah. Um, and I just, you know, I was mad at God. I'm like, why did you do this? You know, my husband and I did it right. We married first and then we had our children. We go to church every Sunday. He is a trustee. We pay our mm. time on the gross. You know, the number at the top, not the number at You're the right. bottom. We pay our time, <laughs> we time on the gross. Um, and we are faithful stewards. And so I yeah. asked God, why are you punishing me? 
like this. Mm. And God had to tell me that he wasn't punishing me. He was giving me a position and my mm. position was mother. So get up off the floor and go take care oh, of those wow. babies. And so thankfully, you know, my husband has a decent job. He graduated from uh, FAMU and Meharry Medical College. So he's always had a good job. Um, and so he allowed me to quit my job. And so what I did was I researched because, you know, nobody in our family ever had no autism. Um, yeah. You know, we didn't know anything about it. And so I had to research and find out what the white folks was doing, honestly, because, you know, black folks are not getting tested early. We are not okay. acting like yeah. we see the signs and the symptoms and what. And they go and get their kids tested and they start getting good therapy at one and two years old. So by the time the child is in kindergarten, they have had three or four years of good therapy. Right. Yes. But what we yeah. do is we say, oh, you know what? That baby going to talk when he want to talk. He fine. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with him. Let him let yep. him alone. You just leave him alone. He'll talk sometime cheering. They, they, they talk in their own time. Well, what we do when that happens is. We deny that child two or three or four good years of therapy so that when they get to kindergarten, little Dan has had four years of good therapy. Little Devontae ain't had nothing. So exactly. Devontae is a pamper. He's fighting. He's not talking. He can't learn. And little Dan is on the level with the other kindergartners, right? Because he's had yep. private therapy prior to school. We wait for the school to educate our children. And we have got to stop doing mm -hmm. that if we want our children to have success. And so I looked at the white women. I said, what y'all doing to y'all kids? Because y'all y'all kids with autism graduating from college. They got mm -hmm. jobs. They driving. Yeah. They getting married. What are you doing? Because I don't want them to live with me forever. Y'all keep that little check, that little $700 that y'all want right. to give me every month from Social Security. Keep that. I want my kids to get healed. And I want to be a testimony to people who look like me that it can and will get better. And so I started doing what they're doing. I got applied behavior therapy. I put my kids in an autism program at the school. I demanded to know from my educators what was their plan to get my children off special education because I did not want them to be in special education the rest of their lives. We got exactly. aggressive. We got the speech yep. therapy. My kids got diagnosed at two years old and they started mm. therapy when they were two and a half, three years old. And so by the time my children got to kindergarten, they didn't look like they had autism. They were learning like the other kids. They were reading like the other kids. They were doing everything that the normal developing children were doing because I did not and refused to wait on the school. I didn't listen to my mom and them when they said, you tripping, you just want some attention. You were drawing exactly. Ain't nothing wrong with them kids. Leave them babies alone. They just quiet. They just shy. They don't like people. No, it's something wrong with my children. And we're going to find out what it is. We're going to let somebody with some letters behind their name tell yep. us what's wrong with our kids. And then we're going to go get them the help they need before the school. It's not the school's job to uh, get my kids healed. It's my job. So I'm going to figure out what my job is, but we got to get educated because we don't know. We don't yeah. know yeah. what to do because nobody in our community is guiding or leading us. And that's what I realized. That's why God gave me three children with autism because he knew I could step out there and say, you know what? Y'all, it can be done. My daughter, when she was two years old, look girl, she, well, if you looked at her, she would cry. She didn't make eye contact. She didn't talk. They thought she couldn't talk. They started teaching her sign language. We had mm. to move from Texas to Minnesota to get the therapy that we wanted her to have. Okay. With the, with a really good applied behavior therapy center, with a really good speech and occupational and physical therapy, we moved into a neighborhood where the school had a specialized autism program. And this girl down Six years old, four years later, she is no longer testing on the autism spectrum. She has tested awesome. off. I didn't even know That's this so was awesome. She has tested off the autism spectrum. She is in a regular classroom, testing above average. Every therapy center that she was signed up for said, you know what? We cannot justify giving her 
uh, therapy. We cannot tell the insurance company that we can uh, bill for this because this girl is testing above average in everything. She's talking. She's personable. Mm. I would not. I thought when that girl got that autism diagnosis, she ain't never gonna get married. Mm. She gonna live with me forever. She ain't never gonna have no kids. I'm gonna always be combing that head full of thick, beautiful hair. <laughs> and I don't know how to comb. I thought this was it. Yeah. You know, and nothing wrong with Walmart, but I'm like, she's gonna be greeting people at Walmart for the rest of her life. She's not gonna go to college. I, all the dreams that I have for my daughter, you know, yeah. alone, you know, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, somebody could take advantage of her. She can't talk and tell me. What if somebody bullying her? She can't let me know. But this girl is doing everything that any other six-year-old child is doing. And that's because I listen to mama and them. Yeah. I, yeah. Know and I saw something was wrong with my baby and we figured it out. And I don't care if I had to move from one part of the country to the other, quit my job, eat bologna, whatever I had to do. I did it for my children because this is the thing. Early intervention is the key. You can't wait till they're yes. eight, nine, ten years old. You got to do it when they're two. So that when they're five, there's no difference between them and their classmates. And that's where the white mamas get it right and we get it wrong. Yes, we're going to pray. Yes, we're going to ask God to heal them. Yes, we're going to believe God for a miracle and thank you, Jesus, for everything and the goodness and all the stuff that he has done. However, we got to pray and push. Pray yep. and push and keep pushing and pushing until our children get healed. Because our family motto is we don't want our kids to get help. We want our children healed completely. Yes. I don't want you to look at my child and say, oh, you can tell she's getting some help. She's doing so much better. No, I want you to look at my child and look back at me and say, are you sure? This baby got autism because she don't act like it. That's what I want. That was my goal from day one. And I'm so grateful to God that he has ordered my steps and blessed me along the way, girl. You can't be afraid to move across the country. You can't be afraid to quit that little raggedy job you got. Because you know what? God will always provide for your needs. And if you make one step, he will make two. Boys, please. I'm gonna take oh, up boy. a time. I was like, oh okay. my God. Okay, it's a plate. Don't play with me. I'm gonna take up a time. <laughs> I'm gonna put my cash, I'll put my cash app in uh, the comments. I got you, I got you. <laughs> but I just wanted to just highlight um, you said so many amazing things. And actually, um, the father that I interviewed last week is on here, and um, his son is not is currently nonverbal. And so you just shared so much of that. Like he was one of the people saying, awesome, like this is amazing because. The one thing that he shared last week was that he had to just start speaking life to himself and about his son and daily doing those affirmations with his child. Because at the end of the day, him and his wife, when they discovered, you know, that he was autistic, it was devastating. Right. Like, you know, you know, like what is happening? Like, what does this mean for my child? And he said that he immediately started to research who are these people that are thriving and doing amazing jobs. And they're autistic. Right. And so. I mean, and this is why this conversation is so important because I believe it allows families to see like she's been there or she understands and she knows what I'm talking about. And if yeah. her daughter can and, and if they can do it, then I can also have equal faith Girl, my child. That's why you know, I'm uh, Yeah, Miles Monroe has a quote and I should have looked it up, but uh, the late great Miles Monroe said, you know, the, the, the validation or, you know, why people are attracted to you is not because of what you say, it's what you overcome. You know, mm. if, if you have overcome something and come out successful, then, you know, that's why people will be drawn to you. And so people see my children and they see us and they see we still alive and they see we still pushing and we still praying and we still helping folks. And, you know, we, we ain't getting our kids healed and jumping up and down and around and saying, oh, look at our kids. We so great. Girl, we got our kids healed. And we said, OK, it's time to go get somebody else some help. We hold I free workshops for parents who have newly diagnosed children you know we partner with the nfl to create those autism sensory friendly rooms that you see at the stadiums mm. we, we work with them on the front end to get that done um we partner with the department of health we said you know what black and, and immigrant and latino and asian families are not getting their children tested because they yeah. feel like uh, autism is a label and they don't want their kids labeled so yep. 
so we need to do something to create, uh, you know, make it uh, acceptable, make it okay to go get your child tested and get some help. Because this is the thing. If you don't get the diagnosis, the insurance won't pay for the therapy. If you don't get the therapy, your child can't get better. So you stop. Exactly. You know, you stop. Exactly. Exactly. And so, yeah. So we, we work so hard, not just for our own children, but for everybody else's children, too. Because if we come up, I, I remember Tony Braxton, um, you know, she, this was when I was in a fight and when my kids were doing bad and I was under the table drinking Tito's vodka, praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> Girl, I'm just being real with you. I don't know how it's too much. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm tired. Girl, right. you know, she, she came on, she came on, on Twitter or, or somewhere or People Magazine. And she was like, my son's been healed from autism. And everybody I know was like, well, what you do? How'd you get him healed? And that was never a, here's how you do it. Here's yeah. what I did that worked for me. It was like, yeah. my son heals of autism. Bye. And she was exactly. gone. And so I was like, you know, I'm, if, if I get, and I wasn't at that point yet, and I said, if I ever get to that point, I'm going to make sure I give parents the tools they need because every lesson we learned was a hard lesson. And I said, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody else who has a child with autism to learn a lesson hard. You know, if I learned it hard, I'm going to give it to you easy. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. So not just for April, not just for Autism Awareness Month, but all year long exactly. for the past six years, we have been on the front lines of autism awareness, whether it's workshops about safety, you know, kids with autism are drawn to water and some of them are wanderers and they like to run. My youngest is, he runs. If you open the door, he gone. You know, I can't let anybody babysit him because they don't understand that if you open the door, he's gone. You know, we were in Houston with my mother and father and my daddy went out to the car to get a case of water. Well, he left the door open, you know. And so I came out the bathroom and I was like, where's Daniel? He said, oh, he's in the living room. And with that door open, I knew he wasn't. Girl, he was gone down the street. Four lane highway coming his way. And, you know, you can't call their name because some of them don't respond to their name. So I just got to go yeah. run, catch him, snatch him up and bring him back in the house. My daddy was like, Whoo, whatever you do, don't tell your mama. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, I just, I'm just trying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't ever tell your mama this, please. Yeah. You know, and so you you can't let nobody babysit your kids because they don't understand. And so we hold free workshops for parents. Like, look, these are the locks you need for your doors. These are the gates you need for your doors. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, you hear about you know a kid with autism um, who wanders off and winds up in a lake or wanders off and winds up in a pool or wanders off and winds up getting hit by a car. And, you know, regular folks think, oh, they done did something to that baby. They done killed that baby. They ain't want to be bothered. No. Kids with autism, they wander. They try to run off. That's just what they do. And we were down in Houston. We, we can't travel by plane. So we have to rent RVs anytime we go on vacation with our kids because they can't stand being closed up in the plane. The TSA might touch them and they don't want to be touched. So we don't want to go to jail, uh, really. And so, we, uh, <laughs> girl, you know, we'll I, go love to it. I will go to the pen, serve my time. And so we run an RV. So we were at this RV park in Houston and all my family's there. You know, again, we in Minnesota to get the good therapy. We left Texas because Texas doesn't have good special education services. So we mm. moved up here. Where we got no family, no support. We got a few friends. But again, you can't let everybody babysit your kids because they don't know about yeah. special education. They don't know about special needs kids. They don't know about autism. By the time you teach them, you just keep your own kids. OK, so we down in Houston. We plan this big barbecue. For all of my family, I got five sisters and brothers. I got a mama and a daddy. They got sisters and brothers. I got 20 cousins. They all got kids. We were all going to come together at this RV park and have a party. Well, we did a site survey, right? And there's a lake there. Hmm. And, you know, my son immediately starts running to the lake. Yeah. And we had to yeah. literally pick him up and bring him back to the RV. And I had to call my family and say, I'm sorry. I know we bought all these wieners and ribs and chicken thighs, but we can't have this party. We'll watch and we'll help you. No, you can't. No, you won't. Yeah. I have to do the best for my child. And you know what? You might not understand it right now, but you know my child is going to come home with me. I'm not going to be on the news. I'm not going to be digging through no weeds. I'm not going to be waiting for his body to fill up with water to float up to the top. No, we're just not going to do it. And so, you know, we, we, you know, somebody came to visit us one day. That's it's like a prison. You got gates up on every room. You got combination locks on every doors. Yeah. 
because that's our reality. And it's okay yeah. because you know what? It's seasonal. You know, you take care of it now on the front end. You don't have to worry about it on the back end. Okay, socially. First of all, you have said so much. We got to unpack it, okay? okay. <laughs> and, and we're going to unpack. And I'm so excited because as we're talking, more and more families that have been a part of our conversation are joining us. So I want to just make sure before I unpack that if you have questions, if you have uh, anything you want us to answer through this conversation, put it in the comments. We do have a Q&A at the end that I will pose to you because you're just so knowledgeable. Just listen to all the things that you do. I think it's just important that we have this safe space to be able to ask these questions. So the first thing is you said early on that we don't take our kids, Latina, like Latino and black families. We are just like in some cases in denial. Also, we're taking advice from other family members. But I want us, I think also if I'm a parent that's new, you know, I just had a baby and, you know, one, two years, I can't really differentiate between normal behavior and maybe this is just his temperament or her temperament. Right. And so right. the first thing I'm going to ask, which I'm about to pull up, is the discovery. Because you said you have three children who are autistic. So what can you give us like specific signs that parents could be looking for? Because maybe... They currently are wondering maybe if their child is autistic or is it something they just need to look into? First of all, trust your gut. Trust your gut. You are a mother or you are a father and you have intuition about your child. You know what? These doctors only spend 15 minutes every six or seven months with your child. You with your child every day. Yeah. If, you, if you have any kind of good feeling, it's probably right. Trust your gut. Yeah. Um, and then if you have any questions, just get tested. If the test yeah. comes back that your child doesn't have autism, then hey, you're good. But go yeah. ahead and get the test anyway. Don't let anybody talk you. Or maybe it's not. You know what? It don't matter. Just get tested. That's why you got insurance. Just go on yeah. and get tested. And then if it comes back that that's not the case, then let's find out what it is, because it may just be that they need some extra tutoring, some extra help, you know, some extra, you know, something at home. But it might be that they have autism. So trust yeah. your gut. But some of the main things that you look out for is the lack of eye contact. Um, okay. simple commands. You know, put yeah. this in the trash. Go get the color pink. Uh, call in their name and they don't respond. Oh girl, he don't never he don't never look at me when I call his name. He be acting like he don't hear me. Girl, that ain't funny. Your child yeah. got autism. You know, my daughter yeah. was very, very standoffish and shy. Mama, she just don't like. Yeah. So, so any of that stuff is a sign or a symptom of autism, spinning around in circles, lining things up, um, anything that you're doing that is causing uh, concern, anything your child is doing that's causing concern, just go ahead and get them tested. You know, what's yeah. the deal? just get them. Yeah. Go down to um, I think. Yeah, you kind of went out, but you're back now. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but 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 you're right. Like anything else, I think so many times um, in general, when it comes to our health, it's like if I ignore it, it'll go away, right? <laughs> or yeah. you know what? You know what? My I, my arm hasn't felt like this normally, but you know, it's just because I slept wrong. Like if it continues, yeah. like you need to go get it checked out. Um, and I, I love that. Just why even have the question? Why wait? Why wait? What you waiting for? Just go get it tested and don't listen to nobody else. You know, yeah. and, and that's the thing. I don't mind if somebody thinks I'm the crazy lady when it comes to my kids. You know, be the crazy person for your child. Um, yeah. girl, she always acting crazy. She's so funny acting about her kids. Well, if you ain't funny acting about your kids, who gonna be? You know, just go ahead and, and don't. And I don't. I don't ever care what somebody thinks about me and how I handle my children. Uh, whether we get tested, whether we get early intervention, any of that stuff. Whether we y'all doing too much? No, we ain't doing enough. What these white yeah. mamas over here doing? That's what I'm gonna be doing because they exactly. kids is graduating from college and our kids is getting a check. I don't want your check. Keep your little seven hundred dollars a month. I want my child to get that. 
I love it. I love it. So let's move into and you said a little bit about it. Like, so the relocation was because it was able to provide your family, and your children with the resources and support they need. So can yeah. you share with us, like, what are some of those resources and Ooh, what is yes. the support system for yes. your kids? So, girl, let me tell you something about being in Minnesota um, that I love is that they are thorough. Um, the special education system, the social workers, uh, everything comes real. They, they are thorough and, and they make sure they take care of their business and their paperwork. You don't get lost in the system. So um, my children received applied behavior therapy through a place called the Lovas Institute, L-O-V-A-A-S Institute. If you are in a city that has the Lovas Institute and you have a child with autism, sign them up. If you are in a city and your child does not, you, you don't have a, a Lovas Institute, find that city and move. Because mm -hmm. besides prayer in Jesus, the Lovas Institute is what made the difference in my children's lives. I look at the video of where they were when we got here. They couldn't touch their stomach. They, 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 I saw the video and said, touch your stomach. They couldn't touch the stomach because they didn't know where their stomach was. It said, tap your head two times. They couldn't do that. Touch your nose. Touch my nose. Where's your eye? Where's the letter A? Find the letter A. They couldn't do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And those people told me, they said, you give us two and a half years and we will have your child in a regular classroom with their normal peers. Mm -hmm. I thought them folks was crazy. Them folks gave my babies 40 hours a week of therapy. They wow. come to the house at eight o'clock in the morning and they don't leave till six. They come on Saturdays and Sundays. Do you understand what I'm telling you? We changed our whole house around so that these kids could get the therapy that they needed and these people could be comfortable giving them the therapy. We turned our office into their office. We put their pictures on the wall. Because mm. we wanted to make sure that they had the tools they need to help our child succeed. So the first thing was the ABA therapy. The second okay. thing was the school. We found a good school with good special education. Look, you think I wanted to leave Texas? My mama, my daddy, my grandma, yeah. my sisters and brothers, everybody, my best friend, Fanshawn, all my, all my cousins, everybody I know and love is in Houston, Texas. I have not had one ounce of ancestry in Minnesota, but this is where the autism school was. This is where I could come and my children could be a part of a, a new autism program through the public school that I didn't have to pay extra for. And mm -hmm. they have arrived in that program, the special education teachers, what they receive, all the special services, uh, the training that the teachers receive is so much better than anything that I would have gotten down in Texas. Um, yeah. Also, the the funding, they have grants that are available and they actually give them to people like us. And this is through the school or through the, the program? It's through the, the county. It's through the county. Okay. So, so the Lovas Institute is a private ABA therapy system. Uh, okay. The school is uh, South Washington County Schools. But then the next component is the county social worker. So usually the county social worker just come and make sure your child is still autistic, right? But no, here we get, I, I get something called a paid parent where they pay me to take care of my own child. It ain't but $500 a month, but girl, I got one still in diapers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, so right. I don't care how much money you make, $500 a month is $500 extra a exactly. month. They pay me to take my children to their therapy centers. So I get gas mileage. Um, oh, wow. you know, I get a grant once a year to buy things that I need. The specialty locks on the doors for Daniel so that he won't escape. The fence that we had to put around our backyard, even the playground. I was able to use that money to buy these things. My mama and all my friends in Texas who have special education children just couldn't believe it. They said, what? They paid for you to have a playground? They paid $3,000 for you to have a fence? Are you oh, wow. kidding me? I got a rainbow play system. Not that low ranking day stuff, girl. I got the good stuff, okay? <laughs> I got the rainbow play system. I got, you know, seven, $800 worth of locks. 
a brand new door, a $1,500 door that I didn't have to pay for. And it's county programming, county services. You know, you got to dig for it. You know, they ain't yes. going to just hand yes. it to you. You got to go up in there and say, I want it, but it's available. And there was nothing yeah. like that. There was nothing like that in Texas. Wow, that's amazing. Because I know that that is actually uh, one of the questions that next week we have a um, a doctor along with some other resources that's coming on. And that was one of the main questions we've had here in Chicago because I don't know of that here. And oh, that's wow. been. Yeah, yeah. That's what and uh, I would like to struggle with. Like, how do yeah. I afford the, the, the services my child needs if it's not going right. to the school? Oh, girl, I'm going to you That's another thing that my, my I do is I, there are grants. Uh, from private foundations that will pay for things that your insurance won't pay for that you want to do for your child. Not even if you need to do it, but what you want to do. I have raised probably a hundred thousand dollars to pay for good speech therapy, good ABA therapy. I don't pay no copays. I have not paid a copay in five or six years. Oh wow! Because, yeah, because I've gotten grants. Uh, and scholarships, and they send it right to the service provider. You don't have to send it to me. That's fine. You can send right. it to them. You can you can take it right to them. So I have a credit on the books right now for you know the place where we go and get private speech therapy, uh, the Lovas Institute where we get our ABA therapy, and it's not just for people in Minnesota. This is nationwide. So if you're oh, in wow. Chicago and you want to get some, uh, for instance, if you want to get uh, you know vitamins or you want to get Get a special, uh, you know, cocktail of, of, of all natural supplements, or you want to get some therapy that the insurance won't pay for. There are grants and scholarships out there nationwide that you can apply for. And so, what I do is I don't just tell people how or uh, where they are, I show them how to get it. It's a certain way you got to write your essays, you got to put your baby's picture in there, you got to be able to tell your story. What's your story? What sets you apart from somebody else? Um, you know, my background is in journalism and communications, and so I'm able to tell a story. Well, you know, if somebody comes in and I said, Well, you know, here's 10 places where you can go get money, but I don't show them how to craft their, yeah. their, their story, yeah. they're not gonna get the money. If I don't yeah. remind them to put a picture of their child and their family in there, then they're probably gonna get denied. It's hard to say no to a child's picture if you see that they have a need. And so, you know, I do three or four of those a year where I bring in families and, you know, just talk to them about how to apply. And we actually go through the whole application. You know, I, I bring them in, we talk, and there's an application under the chair. And for an hour, we fill out the application and they can ask questions and I help them with the essay. And, you know, by the time they leave out of there, all they have to do is go to the post office because we filled out their application. And that's nationwide. But we don't know about that. You yeah, know, it's yeah. not it's not advertised. You don't see it on Facebook. You don't see it on Twitter. You don't see it on social media. And I think the last time I did it, I called it paid in full because you can mm. get all of the services that your child needs paid in full. I'm telling you, a hundred thousand dollars. I was going to a speech therapist for my son, Brandon, who didn't take insurance. She was so cold blooded and she was so bad. She was cash only. I said, mm. where the white folks going? I want to go where the white folks going. <laughs> They said, well, you can go over here to, <laughs> to this speech therapy center, but she don't take insurance. And it was $80 a session, two sessions a week. And I was like, I can't afford this. But, you know, the Lord has always provided for my needs. And according to his riches in glory, yep. not his, his barely enough in glory, but according to his riches in glory. And so somebody told me about one scholarship. I said, well, if that was out there, there's got to be more. And I started finding more and more and more scholarships. And so when my daughter came along and she had autism and my baby came along and he had autism, we just kept getting more and more money on the books. When we left Houston and moved up here, we had so much money on the books. They had to write a check to the new therapy providers, send that money to them on top of the money that we had raised for the new therapy providers. So we in we in the we in the black, and we get as much therapy as we want. We in the black. You know what? So, so you the plug pretty much. You you the plug to all the grants so we can get the services we need for our children. Yeah. Yeah and, and, yeah, and we're gonna unpack that, y'all. So I know that y'all probably want like, what is that? What is she talking about? Um, especially now with us being that stay at home, like 
I got questions that will come with that. So towards the end, we do have Q&A. So if you have questions that you want to pose as you're hearing her speak, please put them in the comments. I will make sure that we address it. Um, to continue on, I actually um, wanted to ask, because you have three who are autistic, but how many children do you have in total? Four. Four. Okay. So with that, um, I thought of the next segment, because this has also been something that I've talked to parents about, some of the highs and lows, especially if you have like a mixed family. So for example, uh, you have three who are autistic and one who is not, like what could maybe be like a high point for that, a low point? Like how does that, how does that, that one child who's not, do they feel like, what are their feelings about yeah, how, yeah. That, how, that, how that impacts their, now yeah. their life? Because sometimes we think, okay, how is it impacting the family? But we do have parents on here who have multiple children and maybe just one child is autistic, but yet and still it affects the entire family. So could you share a little bit about what that's been like, um, for, especially for those parents who have more than one children? Yeah, it's been rough for my 13 year old. You know, he was the only child for a while. He's very, very, very selfish. We spoiled him, um, you know. And so when these kids came along and they started having these special needs and the attention went from him to them, yeah, that was a problem. Um, mm. He started acting out in school. He started cutting up. He started being aggressive with them. We didn't even realize, girl, he threw the baby up against the wall, but because he can't talk, he couldn't tell us. You know, mm. uh, he was being unkind to the children. He was going to school and cussing and threatening. Fuck, we're like, who, the, who child is you? <laughs> and a daddy, ain't nobody yeah. fighting, acting no fool. Yeah. Where you getting this from? But it was just all that built up frustration. So we had to go get him a therapist. And I told my husband, I said, if we gonna spend all this time and money and effort getting the other kids right, we got to get him right too. Yeah, you know, we yeah. Act like his feelings are not real. His concerns are not real. So we found um, a therapist for him. And so he's in therapy. Um, he um, enjoys the spotlight. So he's got his own podcast. Um, you know, I have a podcast awesome. platform. And so he and I do a podcast together. Um, and so we're just trying to find ways to make sure that he feels like he is still a part of the family. Because for a while, and we didn't even realize it, we just ignored it because we expected yeah. him to go to do what he was supposed to do. And so what happened was he just started cutting up. You know, he's like, exactly. I'm sure well, I'll keep on acting like I ain't over here. Hold on. Are y'all don't see me? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to cut out two, three teachers real quick and three Let me throw this baby up against the wall. And, and hold on. Hold on. I got you. Hold on. Yeah, you going to see me. <laughs> But that, I mean, but that just makes so much sense because you think about it, like at the end of the day, is I mean, it's just like for parents who have multiple children, like you need to have that intimate one-on-one -on -one relations with each of them. And so um, we can sometimes make it seem like, okay, well, you should understand what's going on. You should just, you should help us. You know what I mean? You should, you should see what's happening. So you should be a part of the help. But he's like, I'm a child as well. Like, how am I going to get that? This ain't my laundry. Why am I taking yeah. pepper outside? Exactly. I'm in the toilet. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I love it. So going on, let's, let's now talk about, okay, so now, and I, I love the piece. Wait, hold on. I got to get the book so everybody can see the book. How long? I was going to say, yeah, come on, read that book over here. So as she's grabbing her book, let me just talk about, um, again, as, as those are coming in, um, I was drawn to Shalita from, from this book. So about a, a couple of weeks ago, I saw her online on the news and they were highlighting her book. And I'm like, I got to find her. I have to interview her for my autism talk. And, and there we go. Cameron goes to school. So I want us, because this is such a beautiful story as to how this book even came to fruition. Um, also, um, the father I had last week, he's an author as well. He dedicated the book to his son. So I, I just think it's just so beautiful how we're able to use our stories and journeys to inspire others. So can you share how did we come up and how did we get to this point where Cameron goes to school with his children? Um, she kept not getting invited to play dates and story times um, and um, sleepovers. Not like I was going to let her go anyway, but... <laughs> Nobody asked her. So kids were, little girls were coming back and they were talking about all the fun they had. And she just felt so left out. 
And so I was talking to one of the mothers and she said, well, we didn't invite her because my daughter thought that she was mean because she wouldn't talk to her. Well, she couldn't talk. She had autism. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, another mother said, well, anytime they talk to her, they, they look at her and she doesn't she doesn't give them any eye contact. Well, she can't make eye contact yet. You know, and so that's when I realized my husband and I were talking. I said, we spending all this time educating parents about autism. Nobody is educating the children. Yes. Yeah. The little kids sitting right next to her don't know nothing about autism. They just think she dumb. She's stupid. She don't say nothing. She's shy. We don't want to play with her because she cried too much. Every time you look at her, she cried. We don't want to play with her. Well, if they knew that she had autism, they knew what the signs and symptoms of autism were, then guess what? They would want to help her. And so, um, you know, the, the thing about kids is they like being helped. Anytime you go to a kindergarten classroom and you say, who wants to be a helper? Everybody raise their hand. Everybody. You know, who want anybody in kindergarten want to be a helper. And so we figured, you know what? Well, we need to get them the tools they need to help our daughter. And you know what, girl? Let me tell you something. Even with all this ABA therapy and all this prayer and all this private speech therapy and moving across the country and getting into the best school we can find for free, the one thing that made a difference in my daughter's life was her friends. Mm. Once we educated her classmates about autism, once we explained to them what was wrong with her and how they could help, they rallied around her. They became her friends. She started having play dates. They accepted her in that classroom. And when they did that, she started coming out. She started being more confident. She started wanting to be a part of what everybody else wanted to be a part of. And she didn't want to sit in the corner and open and close pill bottles no more. Or, or yeah. play with, uh, empty Easter eggs and open and close. She wanted to be over there with her friends and they were calling her over there. And so mm. those friends, educating her friends, educating her classmates, I didn't even realize it, but that's what made the difference. And I thought, well, why well, I'm going to just make sure my baby's classmates educated. I need to educate all of the classmates of kids yeah. with autism, you know? And so I said, well, I'm going to write this book. I, I'm not an author by trade. You know, I, I'm a broadcaster. I, I have a podcasting platform. I, I do radio. I do TV. You know, I do some freelance uh, columns, but that's different than writing a book. And so I went down to uh, Beavis Palm Press in St. Paul, Minnesota, a local publisher, a woman-owned business. And, and one of the things that I wanted to do was make sure that every company that I worked with on this project was a woman-owned business like me. Mm. A small woman-owned business. So this is a small woman-owned publishing company. And she said, okay, well, this is what you need to do. And I said, okay, well, let's get it done because I'm a real mm. You know, do it, get it done kind of person. I don't like to sit on nothing. I don't like to wait on nothing. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. If we're not, we're not going to do it because I'm not going to wait yeah. eight months. You know, for you to sit in meetings and tell me how you well, let's think about it, let's outside the box. No, are we doing it? Yes or no. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and so we did the book, we put it out there, and you know, God just blessed it because in the middle of COVID-19, you know, we had all this stuff set up, all these story times, all these big book launch, and you know, all this the book signings and going into the schools. COVID-19 happened to shut everything down. Right. Mm. They called me and said the caterer called and said they couldn't work because of COVID-19. The the venue said we can't open to you because of COVID-19. Barnes and Noble shut down. The schools shut down. This book is for four to nine year old kids. They ain't on Twitter. They yeah. ain't on Instagram. How you reach them? Exactly. So the publisher said, you know what? She'll let her push the book back. Don't wait till like June or July. And then you can come out. I said, no. Autism Awareness Month is April. And COVID-19 happening doesn't stop these children from having autism. April is our month. That's the month that everybody pays attention to autism. We're going to go forward. They said, well, how are you going to reach the kids? You can't get into the school. I said, that's God's job. That ain't my job. God gave me the vision. He's going to make the provision. So I'm yep. going to put this book out and I'm going to step out on faith. And I know I'm $18,000 in the hole. I still owe you four. Hold on. I'm going to get it to you. Mm. And I got on social media and I started reaching out to these autism moms and dads. All my friends started forwarding out the book. God blessed me with some great media coverage, a uh, national media coverage from ABC and yeah. NBC 
and national, you know, publications, magazines, and newspapers. What? I'm a mother in Cottage Grove of four children. I work mm-hmm. part-time overnight weekends at a local radio station. I have a podcast. How in the world is my book the number one best-selling book? On I love it. Over Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant got a brand new children's book out. I'm number one. Kobe's number two. Simone Biles wow. got a brand new children's book out. She's like number 11. I'm number one. How? Because God is truly blessing me. He is blessing my family. It is time to help these families with autism. They have been praying. And, you know, I am the provision that they've been praying for. You know, I am the answer to the prayer. How am I going to get my kid healed? Educate their friends in their classroom. Where am I hmm. find the money to pay for the therapy I need? Go get you a grant. Well, my mama say all the way, tell her to shut the hair up. She don't know what she's <laughs> talking about. She don't know. <laughs> she don't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. She don't know. Come on now. Come on now. It's time to stop all that foolishness and let's get these kids right. So that yep. when they five years old, they be right. And you ain't 18 still trying to figure it out. No, by the time my kids are 18, they're going to be ready to go to college because two of them out of the three with autism are testing above average in everything. Everything. I love it. Everything. I love it. You know, and I just want to read some of the comments. Um, Joseph, Joe, what's up? He said, Hello. hey, hey Joe. <laughs> He said, this is really great. It helps bring understanding. A lot of kids don't know how to deal with kids with autism. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and I saw that because we were at a Christmas program one time and the uh, you know the other kids were singing a little song. They had rehearsed and everything. And my baby was singing the song at home, but she was singing on the program. And so we were at the lockers after the programs, getting all the stuff up to go out for Christmas break. And so one of her little classmates was there and uh, his mama said, oh, is that one of your friends? He said, that's Cameron. She doesn't know anything. And he didn't mean it in a bad way. But anytime yeah. the teacher asked her something, she didn't know the answer. What else mm. he going to say? Well, guess what? If somebody had told him, listen, Cameron got autism. She yep. may know the answer, but she can't say it because she's yeah. shy. So what you could do is you can encourage Cameron. You could tell her you could do it, Cameron. Come on, yep. Cameron, you can do it. Or help her, or or, yep. or hold her hand, or, or maybe give her the answer and tell her to say it, or stand up and stand in the gap for her. And then, then she could come out of that. Then she could do yep. better. She could be encouraged. She could have higher self esteem. But if we just keep acting like ain't nothing wrong with our kids, then everybody yep. else gonna think they dumb. Well, you know what? We gotta educate their friends. Educate the friends. I love it. Um, K. Neal said, this is very helpful to watch autism awareness. Uh, hey, K. And then just in addition to what you're saying, like, it's so true. There is an amazing author. I don't know if he's still on here, Evan Roberts. Um, so along with my platform, I do a lot of books, um, book clubs. And we have guest authors that come out. And Evan, is, along with you, is an author. And he created a book based on his nephew, I believe, who's autistic. And just being able to have that book alone, I bought it for my son. We read through it. And it was so helpful for him because he then was like, Mom, that's what, and I, you know, he said to the student, like, that's, he's a, that's what he is. You know what I mean? And it just lit something for him. And so even now, um, me and my son, like, just having conversations, he was like, yeah, I have a classmate who's autistic. It's it's, it's a new norm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not this. Uh, okay. It's not like, oh, what, what's wrong with them? Like, why do yeah. y'all ever want to play with me? You know? But it just made it just something click. Like, duh, like that makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's like, but like you said, we can hear insensitive stuff. You know, and, and this is not just for kids, adults as well. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It's, right? it's, it's so, yeah. them being able to learn, like, you know what? That makes sense. It has nothing to do with their temperament or me. This is just something I need to get educated on so that I yeah. can help them be in an environment that they feel is welcome. Yeah. And, and you know, a, another thing, too, is that the book is empowering for kids with autism. You know, it's Cameron goes to school and, you know, it's not Cameron scared to go to school and we're all encouraging her. It's Cameron's going to school and she's having to encourage us because we nervous. We scared. Mm-hmm. You know, if you exactly. were 
and your child not talking, you don't want your child to go to school because how they gonna tell you somebody mess with them. If you a brother and your sister is shy, you don't want her to go to school because you think somebody might pick on them. You know what yep. I mean? So everybody, the neighbors, the therapists, the siblings, the grandparents, everybody was scared for Cameron to go to school except Cameron. And so this mm. book is empowering for kids, especially little black girls who who were talking about little black girls with autism? Nobody. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. I went to the library and I asked the librarian, I said, can you help me find a book about a little black girl with autism? And she said, I would have a better chance of finding a book about a truck or a dinosaur or some colors or some shapes or some trolls before I could find a book about a little black girl with autism. And I said, well, you know what? I ain't got no time to find nobody trying to get them to do it. I just do it myself. You know, I I'll, love figure it. It I'll figure it out. And we figured I it out. It. Yeah. And I think just what you just said, like uh, along with that, books that represent us, period, are hard to find. So yeah. let alone something that's going to be a little bit more um, connected. This yeah. is going to our next segment. Um, Ebony. Hi, Ebony. She said, I got to come back. Don't she get she me. Gotta, she, she got to come find you. She got to find you, girl. <laughs> and so, Ebony, along with everyone who's watching, we're getting closer to the end where we're going to do some questions and answers. Um, Shalita has dropped some jewels. She has given us some insight. She's talked about connections, things that she's doing. Um, I really, we got an end of the part that's I always end, like a call to action. I'm already inspired, like just the work you said you did with the NFL and all these different places of just like even these parents on here, how we can galvanize and do the things we need to do for our kids. Um, I'm so big. My my mantra is that it takes a village. Like I'm about yeah. that with everything. And I truly believe that it has nothing to do with whether my son or my child is autistic. You're a part of my village. Yeah. <laughs> so if I don't see those resources available within my community. How can I be a part of those who need that and vice versa. I think it's just so important that we share exchange information. We're trying to learn so we can be better because like you said, we gotta be able to have those same visions and goals for our kids than our counterparts. Like our counterparts are like, actually, no, he's autistic. He's actually gonna be the next CEO. So I'm not even worried about that. Like they already have that in their mind. Oh, really? We're the ones like, I just I just hope they get a job. I just hope they are able to do whatever. Just, they like, no, he's not around the country. Check, girl, that's what somebody exactly. said, I don't wanna mess up my check. Girl, if I hear I don't wanna mess up my check one more time, I'm gonna pee on myself. <laughs> I was like, mess up that damn check. If that right. check, <laughs> your baby gonna be 17 years old. What that $700 gonna mean to you? Leave that check. Cause they told me my daughter can no longer qualify for the check. That's fine. Keep your check. Keep your $700. Yeah. She's above average. I could make it. I could be all right. We're going to find some resources somewhere. I love this. So you have the book. Um, you're working and doing all these different things in the community. So what's next? Like what? I mean, I can hear the go get a spirit in you and I love it. So like what What have you already feel like God has put on your heart? Like, okay, we, we got this going. Did you get, this is what I want to ask you. Is your book in Target? That's what she say. Say you done messed up. You done messed up. You done messed up. That's what I'm working on right now. Because okay. this is the thing, you know. Uh, people don't appreciate. You know, people say we love diversity. We love diversity, inclusion, inclusion. But then when you bring them something that's diversity and inclusion, they like, oh well, maybe next year. Maybe next time. Maybe next year. Maybe next month. No, it's Autism Awareness Month right now. Um, and so um, the book is on Amazon.com, it's on Target.com, it's um, BarnesandNoble.com, and it's actually in the Barnes and Noble stores whenever they open back up. But it's on any.com, anywhere you buy books, it's available. So that's a blessing right there. Yeah. Because a yeah. lot of times our books are not available on these um, big platforms. They're yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I good? We good? We back now, yeah. You okay. are not available on these big platforms. Yeah. So so our books are not on these big platforms. If you want to buy our books, a lot of times you got to go to our website and then we got to go to the post office. Right. And I said, I'm doing it like the white women do. Everybody that's working on the book but me is white. I'm like, uh-uh. We'll figure this out. I'll include my people next time. This time I need somebody who know what they're doing. <laughs> God, the only black face. I'm sorry. I'm not even sure they can say it. I'm going I'm uh -huh. to fuck up. Oh, y'all not. Yeah, so you go, you gonna learn it, and it's gonna pull somebody yeah, else. Around. I'm gonna pass it on to my people. Exactly. Next time. But so so it's everywhere. The book is everywhere. Um, it's at the major distributors, and it's going nationwide. 
any dot com, any place where you buy your books, it's available. But, you know, I'm in Minnesota. Target is in Minnesota. And so, um, you know, it was online at Target. So I just assumed it was in a store. And so some of my aunts and moms and dads were coming back to me saying, we can't find your book in the store. And I was like, well, what the hell? I'm, let me ride on up to the store, put my mask and my gloves on, see what's going on. So I went to about three, four Target stores and I couldn't find it. And so finally somebody said, it's online only. Mm. And I said, that's not acceptable. It's not. It's, it's not acceptable. So I found a couple of contacts uh, at Target and I said, hey, we got to get this book in your stores. And they said, oh, well, it's too late now. It ain't never too late. You All know, right. Cameron goes to school. We can do it for back to school. I know it ain't but two weeks left in Autism Awareness Month. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And in September, we're going back to school. It's called Cameron Goes to School. This ain't this ain't Easter. This ain't an Easter book. You know, this ain't a Christmas book. You can buy this book anytime. Let's get the book in the stores. So, you know, it's it's like a wall. You know, it's like a yeah. it's like a wall up. And so you just got to keep pressing, keep pushing, keep trying, keep calling them out on social media, keep doing interviews like this and calling their name. Yeah. Somebody says, yeah. you know what? Let's put the book in the store and see what happens. Let's just let's just put two, three of them in there and see if anybody buys. Exactly. You know? and, and that's and that's all we want is a chance. That's all we yeah. want is an opportunity. First of all, it's hard for us to come up with the money needed to pay for the book, you know, exactly. to self-publish, to self-publish a good book. Is yeah. You know, we can put yeah. some little ragged stuff together, but, and we won't be, again, I, what, what you want most? Where y'all at? Where y'all doing y'all books at? That's where I'm going. <laughs> what white lady at? That's who doing books. What are you doing white women? Where y'all at? <laughs> cats and stuff. You know? right. Where y'all at? With your three bean casserole. Come on, come on over here. <laughs> Not the bean casserole. <laughs> And let's uh, talk about this book thing. And exactly. so, you know, I'm, I'm up in there. Well, where they at? You know, what y'all doing? I want to do what y'all doing. So put the book out. And, you know, it's a good quality book uh, printed on good quality stock at the, you know, regular distributor everywhere. So why I can't be in the store? Why, why my book exactly. can't be next to Matthew Cherry's book? Why my book can't be next to Lindsay Davis's book? Why my book can't be next to Tay Diggs' books? Y'all in Minnesota, I'm in Minnesota. Let's make it happen. So that's the thing that I'm trying to champion now is to get the book in the store. So not only is it online, but when the stores open back up, because it's going to open back up, and them kids with autism are walking down that aisle, and they glance over there. They can see somebody who looked like them. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so my call, because we're about to move to our part of call to action, my call is that those who are on this, we need to get this book. Like, I don't know if you haven't, put the, put the book up again for them so they can see the cover. Right, go, go, go on Amazon.com and get this book, please. Go to Amazon.com. Um, go on here. We need to support one another. We need to be able to have stories that our children not only are learning from, but also they're encouraged. Like she said, they see themselves. As you heard her story, you see what she's doing. We got to support one another. And what I've also learned, somebody knows somebody. Somebody on this live knows somebody that's connected to Target, knows somebody that's connected to these different um, industries. We need to work together to be able to get our seats at the table. So yeah. Um, yeah. I also yeah. say as much as we are receiving from you, we also want to give as well. So I think it's so important that you go to Barnes & Noble, you go to Amazon. You just heard she's number one on Amazon. Let's go ahead and continue to share that message so that we can not only be able to encourage her and her work, but we can be able to educate our community. And you know what people are doing, which is a blessing, and I didn't even realize people would, would do this, is that they are buying several copies um, for themselves and their church uh, library and the YMCA mm -hmm. in their neighborhood and their daughter's preschool and their friend mm -hmm. who got a child with autism. Uh, you know, I, I got a message on my Facebook timeline the other day. My friend Charlotte Victorian sent a book to her niece in Houston. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, a, a friend of mine at church, Nikki, bought four copies for, you know, Children's Church Library. Uh, so people are not buying one book. Uh, they buying two, three, four books, and then they and give it as gifts. It, yep, sharing it with people they know who are impacted. And so that's to me, that's a blessing uh, because you know. And I had to ask this one girl. I said, "Are you standing in front of a mirror, or did you buy two books?" And she said, like, "I got two books, one for me and one for my church." Well, praise the Lord, saints. Exactly. Yep. Yep. 
I'm going to just share some of these comments. So as we are sharing these comments, the last thing I'm going to ask Shalita is about her call to action to us. And so if you do have questions, if you do have things you want to make sure that I um, share with her, please put it in the comments. I'll make sure it's known. So I just want to go back uh, to some of these comments. So first we have Andrew again, who was our guest last week. He said, yeah, forget that check. It's time to level up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ebony said, yes, I need it. I need that book. So I believe she will be getting one. Um, Joseph, who is a really good friend of mine, he hosts a, um, every Friday, he has an organization here in Chicago called Mr. Dad's Father's Club. Oh. Dad's Club. It's, it's, it's that order. Don't kill me, Joe. I'm trying to think of it in my head. But he is really just encouraging fathers to be actively involved when it comes to literacy. He hosts an online book club um, every Friday. He reads to his children. It's so wonderful. So I'm going to tag you so you can follow that, Shalita. But he put on here, um, I like, he's like, I like, um, I like this so much. Can she mail me my book? So I guess he wants, he wants a, a signature book. I is that possible? <laughs> DM you got me, I got you. I got you. She said, DM you, she got you. Um, Kay said she needs one. Andrew said that's a blessing. Yeah. Um, um, and so he he's starting to get to uh he's starting to get to where we're getting to our QA. So he already put our first question. So we're gonna go to the call to action, and then from that call to action, we're gonna I'm gonna give you some of the questions people are giving me. So again, if you have questions. Things you that you heard her speak of, but you want her to dig a little bit more deeper, or just want to connect, uh, put it in the comments, and we'll go from there. So, call to action. I always give this to my guests. What is your call when it comes to autism and just the awareness of it and our responsibility? What would you say is our call for not only parents who have children who are autistic, but also parents who may not, um, and just us in, as a community support as well? What would you say should be a call to action? Um, for <laughs> For our community, what I think the call to action needs to be is uh, get tested early um, and early intervention. Stop ignoring it. Uh, stop acting like the label of autism is, is a bullseye on your child's back. If you see a sign, trust your gut and do what it is you need to do. If you're a grandparent and you see something, don't be afraid to say something. Yeah, I don't want to tell them nothing about their cheering because they get so defensive. To hell with that. This is your grandchild. Let somebody get defensive. Let it be known. Give them a book. Give them some information. Send them a link. Mm -hmm. Give them a business card from a professional the way they can go get their child tested. It's time for us to stop acting like ain't nothing wrong with our kids and get them tested early and not wait till they at school eight, nine, ten years old, not talking, still wearing a pamper, drinking out a bottle, kicking and fighting and acting a fool, then fail kindergarten four times, and now all of a sudden we want somebody to perform an exorcism when all you had to do at three years old was get them tested. Yeah, yeah. So early detection you are, early detection. I think yeah. that um, that that's key because the, the sooner, in anything, the sooner you're able to diagnose and find out, you can start treatment. Right. That's so many right. times, like you said, we can wait to the last minute. And it's like if I just started this a year ago, even a few months ago, it could have yeah. made a, a curve in, in their yeah. in their behavior. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Q and A time. So uh I have a few people. So Andrew, he asked, I need some of them grant links. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, he wants some of the links you talked about as far as the grant, like the national grant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If he goes um, to, I have uh, my website is Shaletta Makes Me Laugh.com. S H E L E T T A, Shaletta Makes Me Laugh.com. And there is a section on there called Autism Works. And mm -hmm. it gives you all the information about grants, workshops, safety, money, whatever you need. And if you can't find what you need there, then there's a, a little icon where you can send me an email and ask me a question. But I have I have all those links and I'm happy to give out that information uh, so that you can apply for the money you need for your special needs child. Awesome. And so I just put it in the chat box as well. So Shaletta makes me laugh.com. And then what do they click when they get there again? Click on them and find autism work. Autism work. And so you'll mm -hmm. be able to contact that. 
Um, Kay said she Googled Illinois grants for autism and she found a few good things as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then um, Joseph just said, yep, it's time to get help now. That is real. Yeah. Uh, the last, yeah, the last thing I wanted to say is, I know you said Shaletta makes me laugh.com. So tell me a little bit more about that before we, before we, yes. get, get, get so, so you are author, you are mother, but you are also a podcaster, a broadcaster. A podcaster. Yeah. So I, I work in radio and I work in Minnesota, which is very, very Anglo, uh, very European, very Scandinavian. And so I'm very black and I'm very loud and I'm very proud. And so that just comes across the wrong way for some people and it rubs some folks the wrong way. And I'm not going to change who I am. I'm not going to your focus groups and your meetings. You knew who I was when you hired me. You get what you see and I'm not changing. And so, you know, I, I kept getting passed over for jobs and promotions and on air opportunities and and I said, you know, Tyler Perry said something at the BET Awards that touched my heart. He said, while y'all in Hollywood fighting for a seat at the table, I'm going to build my own table. Yep. And I said, okay, Mr. Perry, I hear you loud and clear. So I started researching podcasting. I went to a podcasting conference in Atlanta and found out how are these women, it was a women's podcast and conference, how are these women making, some of these women are making five to $40,000 a month podcasting from their house. And so I said, well, what in the hell are these women doing that I ain't doing? Well, they had their own podcasting platforms. See, I was yeah. podcasting for my job. They were podcasting for themselves. And so exactly. I basically just, I didn't try to reinvent the wheel. I just ripped what they was doing straight off of their website, straight off of their everything. And what I did was I built my own podcasting platform. So I have a show called Laughing with Letter because uh, I'm a comedian by my trade and, and, and it's my gift. My son and I have one called the Mommy and Me podcast. I have one about autism called Taking Authority Over Autism. And then I look back, you know, and, and one thing that Tyler Perry said is, well, he said, help somebody cross. You know, mm, you yep. help somebody cross. And so uh, my son's therapist, uh, he's a teen whisperer. He has a podcast on my platform. Uh, Dr. Verna Price, who's a motivational speaker, she has one. Uh, three girlfriends of mine who are always traveling somewhere fancy. They have <laughs> divas. And so we have my sister, uh, she experienced the loss of her uh, child as an infant right after childbirth. So she has one about life after loss. So we have all these, these podcasts and they're all for buying about our community, you know, that we all hosted by black people. Um, and so, you know, it, and it's just amazing to see the growth and to hear the stories. And, you know, we don't have to wait for somebody to give us an opportunity to, to talk about what is impacting us. We have a wonderful podcast and platform, seven shows that air weekly on Apple and Stitcher and Google and, you know, just like the white folks, we, we you know, yep. we're we we going to do what y'all doing over there. We're going to do what y'all do. Exactly. Where y'all y'all money from? We're going to get our money from over there too. Yeah. Yeah. We're not yep. doing it. We're not doing it. If, if we, we going to do it right. We're going to do it real right and white. And we're going to make sure that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's excellence. You know, the, yeah. the website on the bottom of the website, it says black excellence. And that's how we live. That's how we work. That's how we roll. Um, and, and we do everything with the spirit of excellence. And so, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, exactly. It ain't easy. You know, it ain't easy because you got these kids with autism. My husband over here, uh, you know, uh, you know, he got a girlfriend. I got to beat her ass every week to make us that way. You know, it's just, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I got these babies. I got my regular job, you know. But, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, you know, we just got to really, you know, the, the, my favorite scripture is the joy of the Lord is my strength. And those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Every day we need new strength because we don't know what new challenges we gonna face every day. And so we have to lean and depend on God for strength. And people say, well, you tired, you don't get no sleep. Steve Harvey said rich people don't sleep. If you wanna be rich, you're not gonna sleep. Everybody got mad at them. Rich people don't sleep. Trust in the Lord and don't lean on your own understanding and keep moving, keep it moving, keep pressing toward you know the mark of the high calling. And God gonna bless you with everything that he's given you in your spirit.
I love it. I love it. And I and I'm with you. And the reason even for this platform, I just think it's important for us. If we don't have, if I don't see it and I don't believe that there's a platform that talks about it, then we're gonna create a space for it, right? And just like you said, you didn't see a book, I'm gonna write the book. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're we're not gonna just sit there and wait for it to come to us. Yeah. Um so Andrew has a question. I have my own personal question. His question is what is your Facebook name so they can friend you? Shaletta Brundage. That's it. It's so plain and simple. It's just my name. Yeah, so Shaletta Brundit. So if you go and find her, you should be able to friend her on there. Um, Stephanie, who was actually one of my first guests, the first week of April, she hey. has a, a son up and said, hey. <laughs> and my question to you as, you know, as we're coming to the end, people don't have any more questions. Now that we are at home, um, parents at home with their kids when it comes to teaching and all of that, and I know you say you do a lot of workshops. Um, have you done any online workshops? Like, do you no, offer I, any? I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do one before the end of the month. I had one planned for Saturday here in town, and of course, it was canceled. Um, so I have a videographer that we work with, and we're just trying to um, figure out a date. Um, probably, it, it's not gonna be this weekend because it just got it just got too late. So um, next weekend, uh, or maybe the first weekend in May, we'll do something. Um, and it was it was the workshop about the grants, about the mm. money. You know, that's what people want to know. You can tell them about the, the, the locks and the doors and keeping the kids safe. But what people want to know is where is the money? Where yes. is the money? How did you raise $100,000 for your children to get this good therapy, to get this, you know, this all natural supplements and all this other stuff that the insurance won't pay for? That's what folk want to know. And so, you know, like I said, we had it planned. You know, we had a whole month worth of stuff planned. Mm -hmm. um, from here, I was going down to Texas to do some workshops. I was going to Louisiana to do some workshops in Ohio, all places that we live. Um, and then, you know, the COVID happened. So, um, so it'll be, I, I'll let you know, but it'll be sometime real soon because all the materials are there, the information is there. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of scheduling the videographer and getting, you know, quiet space and time to get it all done. Well, please let me know because I will make sure my families know and all of that good stuff. Uh, Stephanie wanted me to let you know she ordered the book too. Thank you, so, girl. So it's, it's coming, and she's such a huge supporter. So I love it. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Ebony said, she found you and now she is following you now on Facebook. So that is awesome. And I, you know, I'm just so, uh, so grateful that you just took this time to be with us. I'm, I'm so, well, so, I'm so. glad you asked. Anytime somebody asks, I always show up. And so I don't take your time lightly either. You know, whenever somebody asks me to be anywhere, I try to come and bring, you know, everything I got because I don't know, girl, who under the table. I don't know who thinking about committing suicide. Mm. I don't know what parent is ready to drive them and their kids off a bridge. I don't know who is ready to lead a husband. God, look, he got a girlfriend. Leave him alone. Just stay there. Y'all got to be there for them kids. God, don't worry about it. The girlfriend, she going <laughs> to leave anyway because he ain't got no money because y'all got some kids. Don't worry about it. She goes to the garage, girl. He just having fun. Just let him have his fun. Just let, just let him come along. Girl. <laughs> no, don't think about it, girl. Give him a chance, girl. I know he ain't shit. We all know he ain't shit. He was, <laughs> you married him. Ain't nothing changed. He's been 12, 13 years. Is, girl. Let him in Let him go on. You know, so I, I don't know where people are, you know, and so I always try to uh, bring some joy and some laughter and some positivity and try to uplift them. Because, girl, look, we all got a story to tell. I'm just telling you, yeah. we yeah. all have a story. Everybody has a story. I'm just telling mine. This is my time to tell my story. And however, it can bless somebody or touch somebody, or give somebody some hope, girl. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm here for. You know, if somebody looking at me and saying, well, you know what, if she could do it, her husband got a girlfriend, and she got the three babies with autism, and she got the older son who at school acting a fool and cussing out his teachers, and she done took the time to write a book, and she working, and got her pockets, but hell, I could do it too. <laughs> I can do it too. If she can do it, I could do it. And that's the thing, girl. It's just we got to offer hope and encouragement, especially as black women, girl. We just get beat down so much on so many different levels. You know, our jobs don't appreciate us. Our families don't appreciate us. Our communities don't appreciate us. Even as much as work as we do at our churches, they don't appreciate us. But you know what? If we just hold each other up and say, girl, you can do it. 
I believe in you. You got it. You know, don't don't let nobody beat it out of you. Keep pushing, keep fighting, keep trying. Girl, we might make it to the one or two of us might make yeah, it to yeah. the finish line. Might make yeah. it to the finish line. When we get to that hurdle and fall, we might get up and still break that tape, girl. We might be able to jump over, you know, j- jump over that hurdle and, and, and get to the finish line. We might not be first, but we're gonna run our race. You know, exactly. if we got somebody over there that we can look up in the stand and see somebody clapping for us, girl, we might make it. I'm just, me being here is just clapping for somebody who's trying to run that race so that they can make it. You might not be first, you might be dead last, but baby, you're going to cross that finish line. You can do it. I you love can, it. You can make it. I love it so much. So thank you. Before we end out, please let everybody know again how they can follow you, how they can um, just continue to hear about the amazing work that you're doing, support you. Um, yes, please just share that with us before we end. Oh, just plain as day, Shaletta makes me laugh.com is where you can go and all the information is there, the contact information is there, the resources for the grants are there, the autism workshop information is there, the podcasts are there, everything, the book information is there, there's a link to everything at Shaletta makes me laugh.com. Let me pour into your spirit um, you know, we are all just trying to figure out. Yeah, I'm from Texas. Who is that? Kayla Shea Bangham. I'm from Houston, uh, Texas. She's from Texas. <laughs> Houston, Texas. She's from Chicago, but she's down in Texas now, I think. Let me know, Kay. I think she, she moved down. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I want to pour into your spirit. You know, people say, well, how can I support you? You know, I, it's hard for me to answer that because I'm, I'm the person who gives the support. You know, I'm the person who wants to, you know, root for you and help you and give you what you need. So just go to the website and, and find what you need. If you don't find it there, just email me and I'll make sure you get it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're not going to take any more of your time. This has been such a blessing. Thank you so, so much. Thank we you are going to stay in contact because I just love your spirit. You better. We, Girl, we, we got to stay in contact. Like, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. So thank you so much. Uh, let me see you. one last comment. Someone, she said, yes, yes, she's in Texas. So she's excited to, to hear that. <laughs> well, awesome. You have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. You too. And, and as she shared, we all going to make it across that finish line. We're make it, yeah, we're gonna make each other. Any you other questions that. you have after this, or if you watch this or listen to this later, um, just message me, comment me, and I will make sure if those questions go to her that she receives those. All right? Have an awesome time. See you later. All right. Love y'all. God love bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.